Pictures. Visit our website at penflooring.com or come by our showroom, 1201 Southwest 17th Street, just over the bridge. Pen Flooring, quality customer service with a family touch. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! All right, 25 minutes before 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. We have had Jim Meskimen on the phone before. He is an amazing actor. He's able to... Um, emulate the voices of so many different uh, characters. He's uh, got credits that would make any, anybody impressed. Uh, his movie credits include Apollo 13, The Grinch, Frost Nixon, The Punisher. His television credits include Whose Line Is It Anyway, Castle, Rules of Engagement, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. And in my world, the most impressive thing that I know that he's done is he directed this uh, audiobook yeah. called Battlefield Earth uh, by L. Ron Hubbard. Um, let me say good morning, because I, I, I think I can imitate some of the characters on this thing here. Let me, let me see if I can impress him with my my, okay. my ability to imitate <laughs> things. Uh, Jim Meskimen, good morning, Jim. How are you? Good morning, Larry. I'm well. Uh, nice to you. Thanks for that very generous introduction. Where, where are you right now? I know you're all over the world, usually. I, I'm in my home right now. I'm in Los Angeles. I'm between trips, so it's it's... Nice to be home. So Johnny Goodboy, Tyler, is always flying places. That's like you. It's all over the world. You're like Johnny Goodboy. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's very flattering. Johnny Goodboy, Tyler, the hero of Battlefield Earth. And I, I understand you've actually listened to our entire audiobook. I listened to 47 and a half hours. every single second of this thing. I've listened to it. You know, uh, do you know the author, um, who wrote uh, A Bridge Across Forever, Rob? What's his name again? Uh, Richard Bach. Richard Bach, the guy who wrote uh, Jonathan Livingston Siegel? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, yeah. He's a pilot, and he, and he said in an interview one time that when you're a pilot, sometimes you sit in your plane even though you're done with everything. You just kind of sit there a while. Well, that was me yeah. in my driveway listening to Battlefield Earth. <laughs> I wouldn't get out of the car. I would keep listening and listening and listening. So it took it took me a while, but it's really an amazing work. And thank uh, you. I, I agree. I'm the same. I'm just like you. I've sat in my car, even though I directed the thing and heard all the actors, and uh, had to kind of quality control, uh, listen to it over and over again. Anyway, it's part of my job. When I re-listened to it when it was released, I, I too was a guy out in my driveway going, oh man, what a story. It, it sets a new standard for audiobooks. Listeners, I have n you've never heard me brag. You've heard me brag about books, and mm -hmm. this this is an awesome book, even if you get just the book, so I don't want to d d diminish from the story itself. But right. but the work done to make this an audiobook is, there is nothing c that compares to this. This is truly, I mean, they don't make an award for this you, you need some special award just for this by the way so, here, so here's my image who, who plays turl who plays the character turl there he did such a good job he's an actor named charlie davis who's also a, a very gifted singer he's in a uh, a doo-wop group called the the mighty echoes and uh i i met him on another project that we were recording and i just he's, he's a very bright guy he's very intelligent and his you know He's got a voice that sounds intelligent as well. You know, there's something about Charlie Davis. It's, it's a great. You know that he's a bright guy. And then I thought, now, if he can actually create this, you know, large, uh, the effect of a large alien. Right. Which is pretty much I, what I, I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, he did such a great job. And I smile whenever I listen to uh, to that character, Turl, who is like the one of the most vivid and awful villains ever created in literature he's a super genius villain yes and, he is, and, yes yes yeah and so that that gives him a very special quality i think charlie did a great job right but he, as as a professional voice guy i want to uh try my amateur skills yeah, and or, audition for you are you ready <laughs> this okay, is what, what part are you what part are you going turl i'm gonna be turl are you ready okay all right hey rat brain how'd i do <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. He's laughing. Hey, animal! Hey, <laughs> yeah, I can animal and rat brain. And, and, oh, and the other, the other one I have from him is uh, is um, uh, leverage, leverage. <laughs> right. You got the, uh, How the did one I? and three word auditions very good. Very well. <laughs> 
smartest ones. Uh, oh my gosh, that, that, it is such a well done audiobook. I, I've listened to audiobooks for years, and I've never heard one done so well. And I, I kept marveling at the work that you all put into this thing. Oh, by the way, yeah, it's, it's who, a lot who, of work. who is Aunt Helen? She's got your same last name. Well, who is that actress? Oh, that's my, that's- that, that that is my wife, uh, actress Tamara Meskimen, who played Aunt Ellen. Okay. Yeah, it's a small role, but we we snuck her in there, and she did a great job. She's a, she's a very talented actress, and she runs an acting school here in Los Angeles. But there aren't a lot of female roles, as you've noticed. There are, I think, you know, less than five female roles in it. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's great. Well, there's Chrissy, and there's Aunt Ellen, and there's oh, who's the who's the um. The, the, cycle, the, the cycle lady, yeah, Chirk. And she, when Chirk, she when yeah. she gets asked, can I can I reveal this to the listeners? When she gets asked a math question, she goes brain dead, uh-huh. Bra- right? Yeah, she, yeah, uh, <laughs> she's programmed to go brain dead by some kind of a capsule in her brain. That's right. Everybody, all the cyclos uh, have this uh, implant in their heads. Yeah. Uh, and the, be, uh, because I guess the civilization of the cyclos, if you can call it that, they we were totally paranoid about secrets being revealed. So they caused every cyclo pup, as they're called, to be implanted with a device that would physically shut them down if they were females. And then anyone asked them about math, because cyclo math is the key to their ability to travel across the universe. Yes, uh, the yes. Technology that developed. Anyway, it's a hell of a story. Yeah, I hear a dog in the background. I love his dog. What's your dog? What kind yeah, of so cute. Got, a new, got a new puppy of some sort. We uh, Of some sort? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not 100% sure because he didn't come in a box. You know, he uh, uh-huh. came in the arms in the arms of a neighbor saying, can you take care of this dog we found in the bushes? Oh, so, oh no. Oh, no. And, and it, we came on Good Friday, so we called him Friday. Ah, nice. there you go. Excellent. Jim, Jim when, did you, when did you finish the production of Battlefield Earth? What was the timeline for this? How long did it take? When did you finish it? It took about, I'm told it took about nine months. I don't remember exactly when we finished it. But, you know, it was, uh, yeah, thank you very much for noticing how much work we put into it. In fact, it, you know, it, it is basically the, the level of work that one would put into a feature film. It just excludes all the things like camera and lighting. You know, uh, well, and it the fact ex- that we never really had the uh, actors all together at the same time. So we recorded everybody separately. Uh, that meant I had to sit with every actor. And really? Them. I always direct them. Yeah, yeah. Wow. We wanted to get the um, the optimum recording, uh, you know, conditions. So that, that meant surrounding each actor with a lot of foam and other things to make the the you know the the signal as pure as possible and, wow. uh, and I sat in the booth with every actor and read every you know the parts with them and, and that is very, that, had dialogue with them. Know, knowing that makes it even more impressive I mean there there's dialogue that happens between Johnny and, and Turl there's a, uh, dialogue that happens between, between all of them uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and well, we figured out we could do that, you know. And uh, it's actually quite common. I know I work in animation all the time. I'm on Marvel shows and other shows, and you know, it's actually getting to be quite rare when they say, "All right, we have all the cast here." Uh, oh, really? And, yeah, and and that's usually because of scheduling difficulties more more than anything else. Do you know what else I wanted to comment on? And I don't know how L. Ron Hubbard accomplished this in the book because I honestly have the book but didn't open it much, except for there was a few vis- right. visual things I wanted to see, like the handwritten stuff in the back. But, right, right. Yeah, the, the new edition has some uh, a lot of great stuff, uh, 50 additional pages, including his handwritten notes about the project, so that's, that's pretty cool. But you guys figured out a way to audibly create each one of the uh, extraterrestrial um, races so we would know who was from... Uh, um, Cyclo and who was from the other? I can't remember the other planets. But, yeah, but you, they all have their own way of speaking. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. Yeah, and they have phys- He describes their physical characteristics, and so that would be the information that I would give to the actor and say, okay, you know, this guy's a reptilian character, and so Ralph Lister did uh, this uh, wonderful character, and Joe Ackman did Lord Schleem, who <laughs> who is a uh, oh very yeah, yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Alien. Uh, he's got very thick skin and a very reptilian. I created this wonderful kind of this. There you go. That's <laughs> it. Oh, you must have. You must have coached them. You didn't just direct this. You were coaching them as well. 
No, no, I, 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 you know, I, we would go over things, but I let them create it, you know, and then uh, I would give suggestions sometimes, but very rarely. Most of these people are very, you know, this is what they do all day long, but uh, I'm just good at imitating what they did. <laughs> How did they keep themselves getting so animated when it was just them in the booth with yourself and not like uh, uh, Johnny Goodboy and Chrissy together when they had their scenes? Well, that's what an actor does. You know, they, they create the, the, you know, the reality that, well, this is where we are. We're in the spaceship or we're in a big grand council meeting or whatever it is. And uh, actors are, are amazing that way. And I got to watch... I got to watch performance after performance, these very skilled people. There's a guy named Matt Wolf, who's in the show, who's just a stunning actor, and you've seen him in TV and films, and uh, Corey Burton is another person who does uh, tons of stuff for Disney, and he just drops into a world of imagination and starts to just be that person, and the sound that comes out is just, just extraordinary, and it helps us tell the story. You can't tell the story any other way. You know, I, I don't know about you, but I... I I get really, you know, uh, frustrated with audio books where someone doesn't do that, you know, where they just kind of read the words. There's right. even audio, audio books that are done mechanically with some kind of, you know, uh, you know, AI voice. Right, it's, right, it's, right. It's just about kill you. It's just about the worst torture in the world. <laughs> so, uh, well, I, know, I, I, will, I, tr I truly think that uh, now that this uh, this has been released, I think all the other Audible books or audi audio books, whatever you call it, Audible is actually a brand name, isn't it? Uh, mm -hmm. But but they yeah, they probably. will be uh, rethinking how they do these things, and and I I just think this is so well done. So did you won an award for this? We did. We recently won an Audio Award. Uh, we were nominated for two. We won one for excellence in marketing, which you know includes. Uh, the advertising and the way that we promoted the book as well as the production i think and uh it's uh that's a that's a very big award they're in their 22nd year and uh there are 29 categories and uh you know it's it's like the the oscars of audiobooks so we were very pleased to have that we've got a lot more coming down the pipeline and uh, you just don't have a music in the background to enhance everything i mean you've got other people speaking in the background you've got the sounds of the machinery going oh, yeah. on it oh, yeah. that must have been a huge huge task uh, for the um a, pr producer of the show to mix it all we had a big big team of people working we had composers and musicians and unusual uh, instruments were brought in and uh you know, it's just, it's like when you score a movie, you don't just lay down a track. You actually kind of sculpt the music to the action that's happening. It's supposed to support the story and lead everybody along and sort of uh, show the emotion of the scene and so forth. And so that's what we, did. we basically had a guy score, a, uh, and a whole team of people score a 47 and a half hour movie. So it would be, like, be like scoring scoring the uh, TV series Game of Thrones or something like that. It's a very big, you know, very big job. And in addition to the score, there's also other sound like the bagpipes, for example. But the one I wanted to ask you about was when um, Johnny is wearing this device that sings American folk songs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, given a, he's, given a, uh, he's given a little gift by the head of the Galactic Bank. And it's a little thing that they give out to their customers. And it's a very, it, there's a very hilarious, but satirical and just rich, rich part of the book, as you know, with the Galactic Bank. And so this guy drives Glotten, gives uh, Johnny, the hero, this, well, here, you're a customer now of the Galactic Bank. So you get to <laughs> wear this, you get to wear this little thing. And that's, uh, <laughs> the singer is uh, R.F. Daly, who's a fantastic narrator that narrated a lot of books with us. And he didn't do too much in this show, but he did sing. You know, Buffalo Gal, will you come out tonight? No. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Your little right. <laughs> oh, that was that was that was a fun part of that. Yeah, that was very fun, especially when he's he's doing surgery. I think I think Johnny's doing surgery, and all of a sudden the thing starts singing, and he says, "Get this, get rid That's of right. get this thing off of me." What is that? <laughs> yeah. the, the the uh, the uh, narrator was had such a, a crucial. A part oh, he was awesome. in here. I mean, he was very, very visual. I mean, you know, Chrissy and the uh, uh, friend, I can't remember her name, when they were, tra you know, caught and put in that cage and everything, you could visually see the cage because of what they were saying, yeah. but because of the narrator. Yeah, 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 it's the writing and the narrator. Josh Clark is a great theater actor. You've seen him also on Westworld. And uh, uh, yeah, I chose him as a narrator because I liked the 
tremendously um, textured quality of his voice and his ability to convey a kind of desperate uh, intensity, you know, because the book is very desperate. It's it's about, you know, it, they say about uh, screenplays, I'm going to butcher this, but they say that, you know, you take a character, you put him up in a tree and you throw rocks at him. And <laughs> uh, Johnny <laughs> Goodboy yeah. Good Tyler is... Uh, you know, he's given this impossible situation of being, you know, a human being on a planet that has completely uh, been vanquished by a, another conquesting race. He's just a guy. He doesn't even know anything. He, you know, he's, he's able physically, but he's, he's got no experience with other cultures of any kind. And he has to turn the whole fate of the planet around. And, and it's a very intelligent look at, like, it's an intelligent look at how you would do that. You know, it's, I think audiences appreciate the reality of that story and the fact that it's, it's handled with intelligence and with sensitivity. We have, we have in our community a, a really great organization uh, called the uh, Marion County Literacy Council, and their job is to help adults learn how to read. And the one, mm. the one kind of underlying story in this story is that Johnny Goodboy Tyler uh, knows nothing in the beginning of the book and is this amazing pilot and this ama he's, he learns science and everything is because he's had access to books. Mm -hmm. it just, right. It just right. really underscores the importance of being able to read. Um, what, what the, oh, I wanted to tell you something. Oh, I, I mentioned this to Carmen. Carmen is your publicist and he had uh, called right. the other day and I was talking to him about this. The, the story, the, the, the story needs to be it needs to be said that the story is very, very well written. L. Ron Hubbard did an amazing job with the story. So just to just to step back from the production of this for a second, just to talk about the story, he it, it was interesting to me how the word battlefield in most of the first part is truly a battlefield as guns and weapons and things that you normally think of with a battlefield. But the other part of this is very deep, and it's it's about psychological battlefields, financial battlefields, a, uh, relationship battlefields. I mean, he really kind of worked into this story the other definitions of the word battlefield. Wow, wow, that's really true, Larry. Yeah, yeah, absolutely right. I haven't heard anybody make that point. That's that's absolutely true. All these different. He, it, I mean, it's science fiction, but it embrace, it embraces all different sciences as well. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a battlefield on many many fronts. Uh, that's what that's why it's an enduring classic and has won so many awards and continues to be a bestseller. It's just extraordinary. I, I love it. I first read it when it first came out, and I read it four or five times. I would read it, you know, every couple of years ago. I'd make the mistake of picking it up and go, oh, I just let me just look at this scene I like, and then bang, I was right back. I had to start the whole thing again. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's also one of those page turners. Uh, when you, it's a page turner when you listen to it. It's a page turner when you hold it in your hand. And uh, what uh, one of the most interesting things were there was a lot of uh, human nature observations. I mean, there was the group of humans against the cyclos, and then all of a sudden, the humans were turning on themselves, vying for power, and that oh, yeah. was extremely interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. He takes a look at political science too, and the kind of mechanics of politics and what happens. Yes, you know, yes. Uh, it's it's a big factor. It's a big factor. So uh, yeah, Jim, it's just brilliant. Jim Meskimen is our guest, and uh, in addition to his amazing career, he's also produced or directed or both. I don't know what you say with an audio book. Uh, I but, just I just directed it, uh, uh, and it's just, it's just amazing. It's called Battlefield Earth. If you've probably heard of the movie, don't take. I haven't seen the movie, but everybody told me that the book is, is what you need to pay attention to, so mm -hmm. I did. The other thing I wanted to ask you is, I have a I have a observation. I wonder if I'm, like, unique with this observation. And I can't remember the name. What was the name of the group of people that kind of, what, that uh, was in charge of making sure that the cyclos didn't know, ma uh, didn't share the math? What was the name? Uh, oh, yeah. The, the Catrists. The Catrists. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I had an observation. Tell me if this is true. Was was L. Ron Hubbard putting the word cyclo and catrist together to be like cyclocatrists, like psychologists, like because he had a, in his other books, L. Ron Hubbard clearly has opinions about psychology, modern psychology, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That's right. It's a very good observation. I would have to say, I'm, I'm, I I think that that's true. Uh, but I, that's, it's really, it's not something that he hits over, hits you over the head with a hammer. 
it's sort of right. one of those things that you kind of uh, have to kind of take a look at. But uh, that's a major, a major theme of the book is freedom as well. It's a battlefield and it's about freedom. It's about mental freedom, physical freedom. Right. You know, Johnny, Johnny is completely a prisoner in the beginning, and he's perhaps you know the most free man in in, in Christendom when uh, when it's all over. So, uh, you know, that enters into it a lot, and I think it's it's brilliantly handled. There's there's a lot to it. It's rich. That's why you can read it or listen to it many times and find new observations, and that's, that's a good one you made. Yeah, and, and plus, I, I think at the end, the, the big message, that uh, the takeaway message that I think the book is trying to say is that throughout human history, we've always depended on war to be the way mm. we we benefit uh, financially. Uh, mm-hmm. and, jo- right. and, and Johnny Goodboy Tyler makes it really clear that no, you don't have to. There is a way to... Yeah, to yeah, be, yeah, a, yeah, yeah. It's great. It's awesome. Yeah, it's a very compelling, uh, compelling alternative, yeah. Well, people can find out about it at uh, www.battlefieldearth.com. I encourage them to go to the uh, website or to go to audible.com and look it up. It's very easy to download it these days. You can listen to a sample. I think once you listen, don't you, Larry, once you listen to just a little piece of it, you'll see that this is unlike any other audiobook. I hope so. I don't know what the sample sounds like, but tr- trust me. Uh, th- <laughs> yeah, this is really a it's really. The book. <laughs> Larry loves it's, this it's one. Really, it's really a good one, and and it and you know want to know something? I was glad it took so long to listen to because I didn't want it to end. So well, I was. I thought uh, the same way. Yeah, I mean, I, I uh, was listening to. Uh, Robin lives about twelve miles away, so I, it's about a half hour drive for me. And I would love it. A half hour listening to it, then a half hour on the way back, and uh, mm-hmm. and and uh, just so wonderful. The, uh, the. Do you do any Scottish accents? Do you do any? No, Scottish? I'm horrible. There you go. No, you do one. <laughs> what's what's his name? Robert, uh, Sir Robert. What's do do Sir Robert? Robert the Fox. Robert the Fox. Robert the Fox. Very great, very great British actor, actually. Named uh, Alan Shearman did a great job, and I'm glad we got Robert the Fox in there so well. He did a great job. Oh my God, you sound just like him. <laughs> oh my gosh! I, 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 is, are you ever going to have another one of those events where I want to come out to one of the events where you where you kind of celebrate this book? It sounds like you did this already, though. It's probably well. We're going to do it. We're going to do it tonight. Actually, we had an event. We had an event when we won the Golden Earphones Award from uh, Audible, and we're going to have another party tonight because we won the Audi, and I hope to celebrate. Uh, uh, Phil Proctor will be there, and I believe Fred Tatashore will be there and a bunch of our cast. These are all just like, you wouldn't know these names necessarily, but they are big, heavy hitters in the world. We know them. I, I think we spoke to almost yeah, everybody. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's really amazing how all of these actors were on the uh, top of their game. When they would come in to do their parts, were they privy to hear the actors like they were speaking with, uh, go, uh, go over generally- their part? No, generally not. We we didn't have that kind of setup. So I would I would do as I'm doing with you. I would sort of uh, read against them, and I would do it like if I'd already recorded uh, Johnny or Turl or or Kerr, uh, as played by Fred Tattersall. I would kind of uh, invoke that performance so they would be able to play off that level of uh, dialogue. You know, but um, no, it really wasn't set up that way. It's just too long. It's too unwieldy. We had mm-hmm. 67 actors playing over. Uh, over a hundred roles. Wow, uh, it's amazing. On an afternoon to do that. Well, th- yeah, gosh. <laughs> Thank you to the, everybody in the organization uh, for doing this, for sending me a copy. It's outstanding. For the listeners, uh, you don't want to miss this one. It's called Battlefield Earth. Uh, the audiobook is out there. As, as Jim Meskimen said, you can download it. I mm-hmm. I have the uh, the the CD collection, which is kind of cool to have something physical. Very cool. Uh, yeah. So that's yeah. fun too. Oh, um, well, c- yeah. congratulations on this this wonderful work, and and have fun tonight at the party. I wish I was there. I want to go. <laughs> I, do you things. have bagpipes? That's what I want to know. Are there yeah. going to be bagpipes tonight? I, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a phone call right now. Make sure we got plenty of bagpipes. <laughs> <laughs> you, know what, you know what people love at a party? Bagpipes. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> uh, Jim Messerman, it's an honor that you are on our show, and uh, and thank you so much for uh, sharing with us. And I'm so glad I was able to listen to the whole thing before we chatted because I really wanted to be at that point. Uh, thank you, Jim. Boy, me too. I'm glad too, Larry. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Robin. Thank Have you. A great day. All right, you two, we'll be right back.
Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. Fox News Radio, I'm Lillian Wu. Confirmation hearing underway for the president's choice to lead the FBI. Chris Ray possesses an unwavering commitment to the rule of law. Former Democratic Georgia Senator Sam Nunn on the former Atlanta Assistant Attorney General.